This is going to be a really general story about my process of getting off-grid solar going and using it as supplementary power in the house, eventually through transfer switches. So I'll be taking certain circuits and making them exclusively solar, but if I need to, I can always switch them back to the grid. Will it pay for itself? Eventually, if I don't keep buying stuff and nothing breaks. But it's not exactly a money maker. Senor, please, some change. Oh. But is that really the only reason you want to do solar? Saving money? By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! No. Not the environment. That's already fucked. <laughs> Aside from that, isn't there something exciting about having the ability to make your own electricity from the sun? I really get a charge out of this. You're just harvesting your own electricity like some kind of solar farmer. If you want to do it yourself, you got to have some kind of interest in doing it. Because everything always takes longer than you think it will. Nothing is ever straightforward. So this isn't a we're shopping for composting toilets type of off-grid. I just mean we're not selling back to the electric company. So you don't need permits, and you won't be disappointed in five years when everybody has solar panels and the electric company decides it doesn't want to pay for your solar. Because if you and everyone else is selling solar to the electric company, what is the electric company selling? It just doesn't scale up to infinity. I'm just saying, tell your fool dad the rules might change. My father's no fool. Excuse me. I have work to do. And isn't it the moral of every story that you should start small and manageable and build up as you gain money and knowledge? Isn't that how it goes? So I don't get all these scenarios where you're putting down $30,000 for a setup that can cover all your power needs, plus make a profit off the electric company. It seems like the path for rich people. We burn more energy than most countries. Or just to make solar installation companies rich. Solar is the future for my bank account. If you'd like to play along at home, I'm using the Blue Yeti AC200 Max. I got it a couple years ago. It's not the newest thing you can get. And um, I don't know, if I could get one now, I'd probably get the AC300. Uh, More expensive, but there's always more to want. Just to go over how you read this display, PV is your solar panel input to the power station. In the center is how much battery capacity you have in your battery, or as is the case for me now, I have two separate batteries and this is both of those combined together. Top right, input from using the wall charger, for whatever reason. You want to charge the battery and you don't have solar. Bottom left is output to DC, like if you're charging your phone or anything that has a battery in it. And bottom right is output AC, which is anything you would plug into the wall normally. Now I leave DC on all the time so the system doesn't turn itself off at night. My second battery doesn't automatically turn itself on in the morning when the sun comes out like the main unit does. So if I turn it off at night or let it turn itself off, then I have to manually turn on the second battery when I get up, which is a very annoying thing to have to do every single day. But I do turn off AC if I'm not using it because it does use some electricity to run the AC inverter. So DC is the natural language batteries use to speak electricity, whereas AC requires a translator that uses energy. What are you talking about, fool? I'm talking about science, Captain Redhead. The Max has a max input of 900 watts. I have 800 watts of HQST panels. I usually get 710 watts on a sunny day. But late in the afternoon in the summer, I've gotten 750, 770 watts peak. Which I don't even know if I believe that. Seems a little too good. Hypothetically, or in real life, a 100 watt panel 
only gives you like 90 watts. I mean, that's the expectation. So if it's 770 watts, that's almost 96 watts per panel. I know this power station does not accurately read anything that draws under 10 watts AC. Whatever, like you turn on an LED light right there and it's it's not saying how much it uses. And, you know, DC is like, I, I haven't really quizzed it, but I guess down to like 2 watts, it's pretty accurate. It was my original goal to have a thousand watts, air quotes, of <laughs> of panels, which would be just right for my 900 watt limit. But even if I got 1200 watts... It's called over paneling. It's a respectable thing to do. It just makes it so you can generate more electricity when it's not full sun out. I looked at tons of panels and compared all their specs and compatibility with what I wanted to do. These HQST panels were so clearly the best watts for the buck in 2023. The price has gone up $40 for a four pack, and I haven't price compared that to other panels and whatever the sales are in the now times. Amazon mostly sells smaller RV sized panels. It's more work to install all these little panels. It did not save me time getting the smaller panels. And maybe I could have fit a thousand watts up here if I had figured it out better. And um, what am I using? Super struts. Uh, what are they? The heavier gauge, 10 foot long, it's standard. I was like, hopefully there's 12 foot super struts. Nope, they're all 10 feet. Otherwise you're building it out. And uh, I chose to keep it simple. Like there's ways to build it out, but you see some of those like similar looking things on Amazon. And they do a thing where they build out the struts. And doesn't it look like those panels are sagging? If they're sagging when they're just like sitting there normal, like goodbye during a storm. So don't fall for it. You can make better. Or maybe you can't. I don't know you. I have this 1980 satellite dish mount, which was such a pain to extract and remount. I thought its foundation was just two feet down. It was like five feet down. It's crazy over-engineered. So yeah, it was a pain. It was a pain to get it out. And then it was a pain to then replant it in the ground where I needed it to be. But it is probably as good as it gets. I don't think any professional installation has anything on me with the exception of the fact that there's a motor in it that I don't even know if it works. So I do have to manually rotate it during the day and that's to follow the sun. More important in the summer, the sun doesn't move very far in the winter. And also I can tilt it. The sun is at a lower angle in the winter, so it's better to have the panel standing up more vertical. And then in the summer, tilt it back more horizontal because the sun is up higher. Um, this is like a real advantage over the whole solar panels on the roof thing. Like I can get a lot more hours in by being able to just follow the sun. So even though I'm only 800 watts, I can, you know, I can get an extra like four or five hours of sun and hit that angle just what it needs to be. This day is a real torture. I think you mean a scorcher. So you can over panel for collecting watts. It just won't be accepting a current over 900 watts in this situation. So yeah, you draw more current on a cloudy day, but if it's full sun and you have 1200 watts hypothetical panels, there's gonna be some unharvested electricity in that situation. The next factor is volts. You can't exceed volts. Whatever your peak input volts is, if you go over it, it trips the breaker and you stop collecting. Like you gotta manually restart everything. Uh, easy enough to avoid, just look at your panel's peak voltage. If you have it in series, just add up all the panel voltages and you want that number to be under whatever the peak is for the power station. Okay, so what is series? 
It's just connecting negative to positive to negative to positive. It's like a bunch of solar panels holding hands and each connection increases the voltage. So in this case, one panel peaks at 21.6 volts. So four panels in series will be 86.4 volts. It's just like the most it can be. The Blue Yeti AC200 Max Power Station peak is 145 volts DC. If I wanted to, I could put six of these exact panels in series and not exceed the max voltage, but that's not what I did because six panels is only 600 watts and I can fit eight panels up here. So I had to make a parallel connection with four panels each to keep the volts balanced. And that doubles the amps. There's a video I have about buying e-bike batteries that goes way further into what volts, watts, and amps mean. But for this, when you're wiring in series, the amps don't go up as you add panels like volts do. So in this case, it's six amps about, and each parallel connection doubles the amps. If I added another parallel, the most it could be is 19.5 amps, which exceeds my 15 amp limit and would trip the breaker. And you don't want to be tripping breakers, ever. Now, I'm not going to get into detail about cable thickness and DC wire gauge charts and what is considered an acceptable voltage drop. There's plenty of discussion out there about that. All I'll say is I'm running 50 feet of 10 gauge wire to the house through a conduit underground that connects to this RV thing to get into the basement. And it's been working fine for over a year now. But anyways, every system's different. A lot of factors to keep track of that I can't even put into one video. And it's been a couple years, so I might be misremembering some stuff too. So the point is, don't trust anything I say. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. So now on to what you're really thinking about. You don't matter. Only I matter. Not that, you sociopaths. How much did this cost? And this has been my electric bill for the past three years. I'm getting roughly a $20 a month savings. But at the same time, I'm not adjusting for how electricity costs more now than it did three years ago. This is just a general good vibes graph. Not for hard science. See you, professor. Power stations and batteries get discounted by $400 to $500 during the holidays. Obviously during Christmas, um, but Blue Yeti also has Mother's Day sales and 4th of July. At this point, extra battery capacity is more important to me than more solar panels. I got the B300K battery this year. When I bought it on sale, it was the best cost per watt hour value for the other Blue Yeti batteries. I mean, you could cobble together your own system and batteries. A power station is not the cheapest way to go, but it does have ease of use and just being able to get it up and going as it is. Coming into this with no solar experience, it's a lot of work the way I did it. Same as with my e-bike videos, you can save a lot of money doing it yourself, but you're spending a lot of time it really comes down to wanting to be able to do it yourself. And if China invades Taiwan and that starts World War III, causing resources to become scarce... The future sounds dismal! Well, then aren't you glad you got into solar? Unless the sun becomes our enemy. Sunlight will become our enemy. Ah, damn it. Well, enjoy it while it lasts. The power is yours! Ah! <laughs> 